So France is the first of the founding European Union members to test this new wave of populism. Let's bring in Dominic Thomas, chair of the French studies at UCLA. Welcome to the show. Hello. Now, as our reporter addressed there, this role of populism with Trump's election in the US and also with Brexit, how do you see the populist movement playing out with France and its economy? Yeah, that's a great question. The interesting thing that's happened in France is that the far-right Front National Party led by Marine Le Pen is shaping this election. Uh, all polls point to the fact that in this two rounds that will take place uh, in April and May of next year, that the Front National will be there. The big question, therefore, is which political party from either the right or the left will be standing against her. The election of Donald Trump has um, emboldened these political parties. It has given them legitimacy, and they are, in fact, the only political parties in the European Union today that have embraced the election uh, of Donald Trump. So the influence has gone both ways across the Atlantic at this stage. Now, you mentioned Marine Le Pen, who's obviously running on this platform of leaving the European Union. What are her chances of winning, and what could the potential fallout be? Well, the chances of winning, it's interesting. You know, back in 2002, um, in the first round, uh, her father uh, managed to make it through against Jacques Chirac in an election where there was a whole range of political parties. Sixteen political parties ran that year, and people gathered together and voted against, uh, against her. Now, in the aftermath of Brexit, of the election of Donald Trump, people are a little bit more careful about that. And as we lead up to that election, to the first round of that election uh, in April, the primaries that have been held by both wings uh, of the right uh, and of the left uh, are beginning to think about these particular questions. Because as things stand right now, it is very likely that people will gather against the Front National. And so the person who ends up winning in that first round against her is going to be incredibly important. Now, let's look at some of the other candidates. We see that Benoit Armand will meet ex-Prime Minister Manuel Valls in a runoff on the 29th. What do we know about the differences between their plans to address France's economic challenges? Right. Well, the first thing that's really important to note is that these are only some of the candidates that took part in this socialist primary, because we can talk in a moment about some of the left-wing candidates who refused to participate. Of those who participated, Benoit Hamon, who really represents the left fringe of the party, he's been in many ways compared to a Bernie Sanders uh, figure. He's in favor of uh, universal wages, uh, of a taxation system um, that will essentially allow to uh, pay for uh, social benefits, of revisiting uh, income and social security policies. And he is now juxtaposed with the former prime minister, Manuel Valls, who pushed through the El Khomri labor laws just last year, uh, which are considered pro-business laws, which make it easier to hire and essentially fire workers. But Manuel Valls, who represents the right wing of that party, um, who's, who's running uh, on that uh, particular agenda, is going to be held accountable for François Hollande's um, uh, presidency, which he served from beginning to end, whereas many of these other candidates resigned ahead of time going into this uh, election. Now, Dominique, Fillon's economic plan includes cutting business taxes, relaxing labor laws, and scrapping the 35-hour work week in an attempt to boost growth. How does his plan differ from the socialists? Well, it's interesting because in this campaign season, it's difficult to actually distinguish between so many of these candidates who are all advocating for the fact that France is ill-equipped to face the challenges of the 21st century. The problem with Fillon's um, political platform is, on the one hand, he's trying to poach voters on the far right, and on the other, propose some dramatic changes um, to employment laws, uh, that particularly changes that are likely to generate uh, unemployment and to increase divides between uh, French people and the inequalities. The kinds of things that we saw in the era of Thatcherism, and of course, this is a political figure and an economic project that he has been compared to extensively these kinds of um, gaps that are likely to come between those that are doing well and those that are not doing so well are the sort of gaps that led to the sort of deindustrialization of Britain and to some of the outcomes of the Brexit vote and are feeding the rhetoric uh, of the far right. So what becomes interesting then in this particular dynamic are the other candidates that are running. And one of the most significant is the candidate Emmanuel Macron. Macron, who was a government minister uh, under François Hollande, but probably resigned early enough to run an independent campaign and has presented itself as a neither-nor candidate, neither of the left nor of the right. He's been incredibly critical of Fillon's economic policies and also of his attempts to kind of mobilize right-wing voters. Right. He has dismissed Marine Le Pen 
uh, because of her far right uh, agenda and the way. And he's also a real pro European Union candidate who understands the importance of investing in new technologies and of kind of transforming France into a new hub for startup industries. Right. Now, now, Dominic, I do want to look, as you mentioned, some of the factors that really led up to things like Brexit, a lot of people struggling with unemployment, sluggish growth. And these are things that still plague the French economy, despite Hollande's efforts. Now, some an analysts are wondering whether it's about that or is it also perhaps a referendum on whether France should remain in the European Union? What are your thoughts? Overwhelmingly, the French are in favor of belonging to the European Union. And I think that a lot of European countries, members of the European Union, have smartened up after the Brexit vote and realized just how important it is to belong to that organization and the particular benefits to their country. But I do think you're absolutely right. And it's interesting because even Marine Le Pen has changed her tone a little bit on the European Union. And to that extent, it's slightly different to some of the other members that met in Germany last week um, or over the weekend at the meeting of far-right populist parties. But having said that, um, the debate around the European Union, around the kinds of influence that these organizations have on France, um, are going to be uh, important, you know, as we uh, as we go forward. But clearly, right. the issue of high unemployment, GDP uh, issues, and uh, ballooning um, uh, debt and deficit are things that people realize are going to call for dramatic reforms. Well, we'll certainly have to watch and see. Thank you so much for your insights. Dominique Thomas, Chair of French Studies at UCLA.